Firstly, regarding hyperstitions and histories, the theme of our panel, I have a section on extra science fiction and hyperstition and another section, historical section on ESP, in artandtelepathy on artbrain.org, launched just recently. Hyperstition theorist Armana Vesinian and estrangement theorist Anka Hennig's book, collaborative book, Metanoia, informs this text as radical listening may be about mental change or metanoia. Hennig also works with Russian avant-garde theories of estrangement, the revolutionary politics of alienation and abstraction, in which futurist telepathy aesthetics are integrated. For example, in the work in, in the Zalm poetics of Velimir Klebikov. And I myself have already discussed Klebanov's telepathy aesthetics in relation to Franco Bifo Baradi's more recent work with telepathy, alienation, and activism in a paper called All That Is Solid, Speculative Quantum and Cognitive Aesthetics of Tep Telepathy and Telekinesis, coming out in a book published soon by MFT Press. And that's the article where I talk about Jennifer Gabri's sense of telepathy. Um, needless to say, telepathy pops up in activist, revolutionary, futurist technologists, and even academic texts, plenty of academic texts actually, that are not overtly occultist. And according to Jacques Derrida and other theorists, it remains central to the history of psychoanalysis and new emergent theories of subjectivity and psychology. Um, Queer affect and haunted data theorist Lisa Blackman and geographer and psychogeographer theorist Steve Pyle are just a few more theorists who take telepathy beyond its folksy occult box and stretch it across a wide range of arts and humanities sciences, demonstrating its plasticity and multiplicity. Telepathy can enable or disable mental transference and transcend or facilitate trans-individual and individual mental resistances. Like a Derrida and Pharmacon, it can both hurt and heal. I should say quickly that Derrida has a lot to say on Sigmund Freud's work with telepathy compared to Joshua Rami, who downplays the importance of telepathy for Freudian critical theory, in my humble opinion, despite some good discussion of telepathy in his book, The Hermetic Deleuze. By seeking out diverse multitude and increasingly encyclopedic fusion of artistic and theoretical telepathies, I inevitably contribute to telepathic hypostition. In Art and Telepathy, um, I discuss sound artists working with telepathy, including Alvin Lucia, Pierre Henry, and Roger Lafosse. They all work with brain computer interface um, technologies to create telepathy and sound work. To name a few who are working with um, yeah, those technologies, and there are more to be included. Okay, so you can. Very blurry image of. Can you read that? Yep, okay. So you can see there's art and telepathy, a bunch of other online exhibitions and um, the chat sections. So, uh, okay, I'll leave it there. Last year I created an artwork with sound and telepathy aesthetics, working with art, working as artist curator for modern art project Blue Mountains called Emergency Alfoil Anthrop. That's this image here. My collaborator in this work is drag queen and performance artist Naomi Oliver, wrapped in alfoil with her cigar box guitar myself wrapped in our foil with a broken violin and together we stood on a space blanket also known as an emergency blanket or an energy blanket. I named the residency and exhibition EDAC, Energy, Data Abstraction and Cognitive Capitalism. I was struck by the acoustics of the rapid cliff face descent into rainforest just below our studio as well as the cave amphitheatre and bird song rich waterfall environment called Witch's Leap. Named after what may have, um, what many have seen as a witch's face in the brown rock of the waterfall. When I saw the rock, the face in the rock, I immediately saw Sun Ra and was transported to the lush and otherworldly natural environment of his musical film, Space is the Place, which is possibly not appropriate as a white person. Anyway, especially as I knew that I wanted to float my... This is hard to explain. I tried to write this to make it sound normal, but it doesn't. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, my, je <laughs> my jellyfish brain woven out of telecommunications. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> um, so it's woven out of telecommunications wire, and it's a jellyfish brain. So, okay. um, and um, so having that in my mind, I didn't, it was just, um, yeah, just transporting to a sunrise space in the place far too much. And um, so there it was, bobbing about. Um, and on fishing line. In the context of Witch's Leap and Emergency Alpha Anthrop, the tinfoil hat of a climate change denier is switched mentally and conceptually into a device allied to emergency energy blanket of a future climate change bushfire survivor. 
The work attempts to trigger metanoia of energy crisis consciousness, but it is also riffing off the ongoing telepathy aesthetics of other artists I research. I know I was inspired by Pauline, the work of Pauline Oliveira, Sunra, and Gianni Motti when creating this work. By recognising their work with telepathy, I sustain a telepathic dialogue with them and attempt to create a hybrid fusion that transcends their works in my own way. I have discussed Gianni Motti in previous papers, such as human and non-human telepathic collaborations from the 60s, 80s, and now, and in the All That Is Solid paper. So I'll just briefly mention his work so I can focus on Oliveira and Sunra. This will be the first time I talk about Sunra. Um, okay. Oh. I thought there was meant to be no sound. Anyway. Um. Okay. Um, okay. Gianni Modi. Modi qualifies as a radical listener and generator of metanoia through his Psy Room for galleries in Switzerland and Bogota, Colombia, in which the artist Modi operates as a relational agent, conducting post-Lacanian psychoanalytic sessions and engaging in a listening process with gallery visitors who were invited to tell Modi their problems. In Bogota, most people complained about Colombia's president, Salfa, so Modi arranged with help from local newspapers to invite the people for a group psychoanalytic session outside the presidential palace, where everyone sat silently and sent a telepathic message for the president to resign. <laughs> this public performance of the telepathy of psychoanalysis resi resulted in Modi fleeing Bogota when harassed by government agents. Modi has also claimed responsibility for an earthquake as an artwork. His work, The Large Hedron Collider, tracked by Cameron as an artwork. And last year, remembering that I'm interested in his work with telepathy, Modi invited myself personally, along with many others, to participate in his global instructional tele telepathic artwork to celebrate 100 years of data. Modi and many participants attended a group telepathic session wearing an alfoil hat, a cabaret Voltaire, and many others participated by wearing the same alfoil hat wherever they were in the world. So that's me in my bed, three o'clock in the morning, dropping my iPhone on my face. <laughs> this work is called Paradigm Shifts, and like Cyrum, it was intended as an act of resistance against, against greater powers, attempting telepathic metanoia. Modi's instructions were that this action consists of the telepathic seance in which the audience is invited to participate and by the four of thinking to try and influence and destabilise those that are governing us. For this extrasensorial seance, the artist will distribute a dispositive, a kind of firewall to prevent electromagnetic waves to interfere. Um, so, moving on to Pauline Oliveros. This is his siren work in Switzerland and then in Bogota. <laughs> Here is what I've written on Oliveras' sonic meditations for art brain or art and telepathy. Uh, just a ch uh, chopped up section. Pauline Oliveras experimented with telepathic transmission and the cognition of sound in works exploring deep listening such as Sonic Meditation 3 from her Sonic Meditations written in, in 1973 and published in 1974. She's considered a great figure of American minimalism and was also the founder of deep listening and the tradition of new age, new age music and avant-garde spirituality. Oliveros abandoned composition performance practice to develop a method of group listening that flattened the relationship between composer and performer and audience in the service of consciousness raising environmental dialogue and sonic meditations. Her work, Pacific Tell, instructs, uh, I quote, find your place in a darkened indoor play a space or deserted out of doors area. Mentally form a sound image. Assume that the magnitude of your concentration uh, is on or that the vividness, or the vividness of this sound image will cause one or more of the group to receive this sound image by telepathic transmission. Visualize the person to whom you are sending. Rest after your attempted telepathic transmission by becoming mentally blank. When or if a sound image different from your own forms in your mind, assume that you are receiving from someone else. Then make that sound image become audible. Rest again by becoming mentally blank or return to your own mental sound image. Continue as long as possible or until others are quiet. So in new research, I further note Douglas Kahn and others um, observe Oliveros' work with telepathy, cognition and barrage of energies, including magnetic, electrical, electromagnetic, geomagnetic and quantum, as well as acoustical. Um, Kahn notes Oliveros' spiritual and occult trajectory taken from American modernists, Henry Carl, uh, Ruth Crawford, Dane Rudyard and David Tudor and quotes Gordon Mumma on Oliveros. Pauline, 
Holly Oliveris is involved in both rational and non-rational aspects of music. She has diversely skilled in instrumental and electronic music techniques. She also produces um, extrasensory perception and telepathy, end quote. Khan integrates Oliveris' telepathy aesthetics into her expansive concept of the sonosphere that resonates with energetic forces and waveforms at the core of the Earth. Oliveris' earthly sonosphere connects these waves to her theories and metaphors of quantum physics, brain cognition and everything. From the sonosphere, you should be able to map, and oh, this is quoting her, um, from the sonosphere, you should be able to map the overview of waves that are waving. The waves are out there and they're waving, end quote. The sonosphere is made of waves and energy, and Oliveros imagines an exchange between photons and photo photons and photons through a communicative and energetic conception of matter, and what she calls quantum listening and quantum imp improvisation. Her observation of light bouncing off the moon led her to create musical works that involve bouncing sound off the moon using high-powered amplifiers and many Yagi antennas of an amateur radio enthusiast already um, working with moon bounce in 1987. She bounced her voice, a whistle, accordion, and a conch shell off the moon. Later in 1996, Oliveros used an old Cold War dish behind Stanford to amplify and distort the voices of 400 participants. Oliveros' interest in telepathy clairvoyance, supersensory experience, esotericism, vibratory waveforms and the occult aligns her with the strong tradition of theosophical engagement with physical sciences and nature. Her work with brainwave entrainment, Schumann resonances and even speculative geomagnetic reversal was informed by new age pseudoscientist um, Greg Braden. According to Kahn, Oliveros as an artist works with a different license to Braden, Blavatsky and occult magic religious authorities and New Age charlatans. Um, the occult magic New Age charlatans is um, a um, kind of quote. Oliveros created ambient oscillatory music with amplified sub-audio sub -audio audible um, frequencies to simulate a human resonance capable of entraining brains and stimulating imagination. And she didn't generate her art to support brain and Scottish pseudoscience. Oliveros' contribution to radical listening is through deep listening and quantum listening and with attention to awareness and attention to cognition, waveforms, energy and data in particular. Her deep listening class taught a heightened state of awareness of sound, sounding and silence with energy exercises based on physical movements of Tai Chi and yoga. She says moving the body is essential and basic to heightened awareness. Energy refers to heat, electricity and magnetism. Oliveros is not a cultist or a technologist. She was renowned for always being, at, although she was renowned for always being at the forefront of technology, technological experimentation for five or six decades. For example, she was quick to access Internet 2, developed by DARPA, Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, for transmission of large audio and video files, music, working with telepresence and telematics, and multi-site performances. In conversation with Oliveros, Cory Archangel commented on her use of DARPA technologies. Quote, these technologies were not designed for these purposes, yet, and yet you have continually bent them to your vision. End quote. Oliveros used the DARPA technology and hacks it conceptually rather than actually. Oliveros conceptually and artistically hacks both DARPA technoscience and Braden pseudoscience for own artistic means. In her text, Quantum Improvisation, The Cybernetic Presence, Pauline Oliveros looks at Ray Kurzweil's book, The Age of Spiritual Machines, When Computers Exceed Human Intelligence. And like Kurzweil, she anticipates future cognitive implant technologies and the development of a, of a, of a <coughs> musician chip, not musician chip, musician chip. She speculates on future self-aware machines that reproduce via patterns of matter and energy and asks, what would I want on a musician chip if I were able to receive the benefit of a neural implant technology? What kind of 21st century musician would I, could I be? Oliveris is also concerned with new input from a musician chip for improvisers, as well as imagination and improvisation more generally. Oliveros addresses past and future histories of musician, musicianship, paying attention to improvisation in jazz, hip hop and classical music, as well as parallel histories of attempts to integrate improvisation in cybernetics, computing and AI intelligence. Oliveros synthesized psychology of consciousness together with physiology of martial arts and sociology of feminism as she incorporated attention and awareness theories of her karate practice. This martial arts aspect of Oliveros' creative intellectual practice, and it can be noted she was a black belt in karate and integrated Zen meditation and mindfulness techniques in her music practice, resonates with the quasi-martial arts practice aesthetics 
strategy of Walt Benjamin's model for revolutionary mental resistance in his concepts of the Tiger's League, an angel of history, in which a break must be made with both historical determinism and its speculative futures in order to be present in the now as an agent of change. Oliveira speculates that a futuristic musician chip may also open up new spaces, interdimensional spatiality, and indeed the kinds of imaginative, telepathic, and angelic cosmic spaces of Saturn and Sun Ra. When she asks, who will be playing this tune? Who will be listening and where? Another question, what should we do with our brain? Is asked by philosopher Catherine Malibu, who understands the Anthropocene as a psychical and psychotropic problem in which the human brain must adapt. To which the human brain must adapt. Um, and this is a question that Oliveros could be asking as well when she considers the role of the neocortex as the seat of creativity and problem solving and its augmentation by neural implants. Oliveros writes um, that she prefers a musician chip that can be easily removed rather than permanently implanted. She says we must decide though on what... Um, I'll just skip to Sunra. Um, she talks a bit more about the chip and... Um, Okay, like Oliveira, Sun Ra worked with metaphors of energy, telepathy, vibrations, outer space, and mental transformations of metanoia. His Pauline Oliveiras. Pauline Oliveiras. Um, what with metaphors of energy, telepathy, vibrations, outer space, and mental transformations of metanoia. His elaborate Afrofuturist headpieces surely must have assisted his reported charismatic telepathy and his efforts to create alternative mentalities and changes in people's consciousness. He was, he says, an angel from outer space. He, he worked with cosmic energies to move people mentally and physically and used the poetics of quantum vibrations to enable telekinesis, or at least a virtual dreamlike telepathic sense of funky transportation. In Space is the Place, Sun Ra describes how to set up a colony for black people and improve their vibrations. We bring people here through isotope teleportation, I'm not sure what this word is, transliquization, or do you say transmolecularization? I'm not sure. Um, better still, teleport the whole planet here through music. Telepathy and telekinesis can be understood as a form of energy transfer that is not incompatible with materialist consciousness of Freud and William James, techno-scientific gadgets of Facebook, Google, DARPA, and prosthetic science on the one hand, and the new age pseudoscience of Braden on the other and certainly artists such as Oliveros and Sun Ra have earned a telepathic reputation through generation of cosmic techno-futurist cons consciousness. Daniel Kreis looks at energy and psychological integration in the work of Sun Ra and notes that Sun Ra used technological metaphors. He opposed the guns of Black Panthers and Jack was Jerry Alder's conscientious objector in, um, uh, of World War II conscription to point to, older, to future outer space utopia. Sun Ra conceived of the world as made up of patterns of energy that could be coordinated through music and the technologies that produced it. Um, like Oliveira, Sun Ra's work is a cultural proto-informational imagining that runs parallel to the cybernetic research of the decade. The question of what should we do with our brain and the dynamic feedback loop of neuroplasticity and cultural plasticity is also being asked by Sun Ra in his collaborative work with improvisation. Price observes a plastic dialogue through a flux of energy through space-time that is allied to surrealist automatism, um, a technique right for facilitating telepathic communications and collaborations, and notes that Sun Ra used automatic drawing techniques for album covers in the 50s and 60s. DIY instruments were used in Sun Ra's orchestra performances to facilitate new flows of energy through the band, coordinate consciousness of the players, and bring them in tune with nature and nature's vibrations. Sun Ra was preoccupied with consciousness and energy patterns of the universe, as tools in creating group mind and individual psychological in reintegration. His metaphors of energy, spirituality, metaphysics, freedom and improvisation, vibration and teleportation are open to telepathic interpretation. As with many jazz musicians, telepathy is a word that is often used uh, to describe the collaborative listening that occurs during heightened improvisation and according to Sun Ra blogger Mike Walsh, his band members claimed he had a tele he'd had telepathic powers. Telepathic metaphors were within his experimental, uh, within, within the experimental avant-garde arts at the time. Um, oh, sorry, telepathic metaphors were within experimental and avant-garde arts of this time. And I've discussed the work of 
with telepathy of Yoko Ono and the Grateful Dead, as well as conceptual artist Marina Bramovic, Robert Barry, and many others in other papers. Sun Ra has declared, we're like space warriors. Music can be used as a weapon, as energy. The right note or chord can transport you into space using music and energy flow, and the listeners can travel along with you. The Black Panthers also wish to move and liberate Black Psyche and Christ details the clearly different methods of working with mental resistance and black consciousness by Sun Ra and the Panthers. On another level, Sun Ra and the Black Panthers work with telepathy of affect contagion as it operates in large crowds, as acknowledged by social theorist Gabriel Tade and anthropologist Marcel Mauss. And I'll skip the bit, I don't I think I'm out of time. Um, yeah, so I do have a paper with a quote um, on energy meets telepathy material conscious that I'll just you for later. <laughs> <laughs>